Hey everybody, thanks for uh, clicking on the video today. Uh, we'll be going over our dear friend Ian Foot and some backstory, some lore if you will, uh, regarding his ex-girlfriend. Uh, now, I do have pictures of him and his ex-girlfriend um, I can show you, but honestly I'm not sure if it's doxing quite yet. So, I'm not going to put him up here. You can definitely look it up on his Facebook page, which he has made very public. I'm not telling you to not go there or to go there. I'm just saying I'm not doing it because I don't know if it's doxing or not technically. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, um, he goes over how much he misses her and how he thinks she was like the love of his life. But there's definitely some dark undertones here. Um, number one being, I think this guy was like following her or stalking her for a bit. I, I can't tell. It seems like there was some kind of mutual connection possibly. Or maybe it seemed like she was more of like friendly or he was more of like a interested in her uh, romantically, if you know what I mean. But hey. You know, let's take a look and see uh, what Ian has to say today. That little bitch. He made it seem like we didn't have any kind of relationship at all. Like I was just a customer. Bro, the fucking foundations of this guy's stories already have cracks. I have so many memories of our time together. Test. She was like trying to invent new drinks for the menu. And I was sitting there testing drinks that she was inventing and telling her what I thought about them. I remember talking about how she liked video games. I didn't really like video games because I found they were antisocial. Just a time sink. That I liked games that brought people together in physical space. Like Settlers of Catan or Magic the Gathering or playing Texas Hold'em with my friends. I didn't like video games because I found them socially isolating. Either you're playing by yourself, in front of a screen by yourself, or you're sit, sitting with a bunch of people staring at a screen, but you're not actually interacting with each other. And I didn't like it. And I kind of bummed her out a little bit, because she was like so into the video games. But I really liked the fantasy. I liked the horror, I liked the decorations, I liked the style, I liked the drinks, I liked the names, I liked the menus, I liked the robot fights. I liked the Magic Gathering and the Settlers of Catan. I really liked her. We talked about, uh, I remember there were, there were times we talked about television shows. We talked about uh, King of the Hill. We talked about Red Dwarf. We talked about different things in media that allowed us to understand each other by expressing our opinions about these various shows and these various characters in these various shows. And it made us happy that there was overlap. That, oh, you like that show too? I like that show. Oh, you like that show too? I like that show. She talked about what it was like coming to Canada, how our family fled from Vietnam to Italy and then they came to Canada and she knew Italian and Vietnamese but she didn't know English and for an entire year she went to school and she couldn't communicate with people she didn't understand her teachers she didn't understand her classmates she had to like pick it up by being absorbed in it but for a long time she was just completely isolated completely and totally probably why she's so good at giving people a fucking I was lonely when I was young too I felt like there, there was like I could empathize tried to pretend we didn't have a relationship now something I must admit is admittedly um hard to watch is how he you could tell he genuinely did care about this woman to a degree um however what's hard for me to think of is like he's kind of creepily into her and he's made these weird he'll make these weird parallels between her and like his daughter and it's just it's fucking weird um yeah i'm gonna i'll probably throw in a few screenshots randomly throw this video by the way if, you, if i haven't already um just randomly out of context to show you just how unhinged this guy actually is, by the way. Watching movies on the sofa. Makes me sick. Makes me sick. That someone can be so fucking deceptive. I 
I really thought she was the one. I always wanted to be in control. I always chose to live in a way where I was in control. It was one of the things that I liked about her. When I went into the place, I was like, I don't know. It made me feel at home. It made me feel at home. I was like, I want this person to be the one that beautifies and decorates and nests our home. I always liked to entertain. I didn't like going to parties. I didn't like going out. I didn't like going out and meeting new people. I did not like going out and meeting people. I don't really generally like people. I always entertained. I had like the party house in Ottawa when I was a teenager. When I was 19, it was like my place was the place to be. One of the worst parts about this guy is he's got that fucking, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, fucking anybody, yeah, I mean, I, it was the fucking, you know, it was the shit. You know, like, the, you know, like they peaked when they were, like, 20 <laughs> kind of mentality. He is that kind of guy, and I just, I hate it, because I know so many people like this who just could not escape that mentality. Like, dude, you're fucking almost 50. When I was in Halifax, I always had a nice home. I always entertained. People liked coming to my home. I always had a, a, a place that people liked to visit. And it was just, when we're hanging out with my friends, it, I would never go to hang out at my friend's house because it's just like, you get there and then we're together and it's like, there's nothing to do. You want to go over to my place where all the stuff is? My place was, I, I was always the host. And I would, I liked having a hostess. I wanted a woman that I committed to, to not want to be going out and having excitement in the community, but to be a hostess. And here he is again, just showing more of like that predatory I need to be in control. I don't want you. He literally is saying, I don't want you going out and having fun with other people. I want you here. And the excuse is he's saying he wants a hostess. He wants someone to settle down with. But he doesn't want them to go out and do anything. This is his controlling, abusive behavior. Once again, showing up. And just he's just telling us at this point. He's he's trying to mask it with some kind of, oh, no, man. we're just I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to, like, whatever. I just, I just don't want her to have fun at anyone else's house other than ours. It's like, what the fuck? To be a good hostess. That's it. That was like, that was something that I valued. That was something that I looked for. To spend all my time hanging around at home with my wife and hopefully kids. Oh yeah, sounds like you want to set her up for life there, buddy. Oh yeah. I don't expect I'll ever see my fucking daughter again. <laughs> and here he goes again. This is what I'm talking about. He brings up his daughter in the weirdest times. Like this is the, He's like creating parallels of women and his daughter. And he does this. He does this on his Facebook. He does this on his like YouTube videos and his rants. It makes It's so weird and creepy to me. Because we all know the kind of people that, you know... I like this guy who draws those parallels and what they think of. It's it's gross. I'm not accusing him, but I'm just saying. But for me, happiness was just having a beautiful home filled with plants and animals and games and books and musical instruments and art and tools and technology and movies and music and to have a beautiful home that was 
not some sterile kind of a place, but it was filled with life and vibrancy. And to have people come to visit, to have enough space to have people come to visit and hang out and for them to enjoy not just our company, but our home. That was like, I really, really, really wanted that. I really wanted that. I used to have that. I thought I could have that with her. Ian exhibits a very concerning like behavior, which a lot of other locales exhibit, and it's this obsession with, I need to find a girl, and then I will obsess with that woman, and then I will, like, he builds this fantasy in his head. Which I get, like, we all have hopes and dreams, but he has this obsessively compulsive fantasies with women. He, it's just so weird to me that, like, he's still thinking about this. This guy clearly is living in someone's house. He only, he has a couch and everything in the one room. Like, which leads me to suspect this guy's only living in this one room right now. And I'm just want to point out right now, I've been in a situation where I was literally renting a room. That's all like, that's where I lived. I lived in a room and I fucking went insane, especially from the heat. I didn't have an air conditioner for a bit. And the one summer it was like 30 degrees, horrible, awful, awful stuff. Do not recommend. I'm not saying it's your choice, but you know, whatever. I don't really like going out, meeting new people. I don't like crowds. I was never big on concerts and crowds and malls and I felt a lot more comfortable hanging out beside a campfire in the woods beside a lake. With my garbage bags and hatchet set. Get a few friends or my family. I used to camp with my daughter a lot. I'm so miserable. I'm so fucking miserable. Just lonely and crazy. I really love that little Vietnamese woman. I like really, really fucking loved her. I commuted all the way from Ossington to uh, Markham, back and forth every day. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, here's a little infographic just showing you basically that the uh, the trek, the adventure he would go on every day to see this woman. Just just so you're aware. I lived in a shithole, and I was gonna get a new nicer place once I got a few more bit more money but I chose where I lived I chose to live on Ossington and commute all the way back and forth to Markham I paid more money for a lower quality place to live and travel all the way from Ossington downtown Toronto to Markham and the reason that I chose to live there is so that I could be close to that little Vietnamese woman, the one that owned the bar. And here, like, we have more of that behavior where now we can see that Ian is going out of his way to change his life to find a way to put this woman in it in an unhealthy way. I chose where I lived so that I could be close to her. I went there every single day I loved that woman wanted to be around her she was all I could think about was being with her I truly believed that I had found the woman that I had spent my entire life looking for that all the strange trials and tribulations the path through my life all the weird little misadventures the mistakes I made along the way that taught me things that it was all leading to her. That I had 
been single for years and years and years. Women would throw themselves at me for years I was single, waiting, looking to find the woman that I was going to devote the rest of my life to, the woman that I was going to commit to for the rest of my life, the woman that I was going to ask to marry me. And that little Vietnamese woman with the pink hair that owned the bar, she was the woman that I had been looking my entire life for. I had been looking for her for years. I genuinely fucking loved her. I went there every day because I wanted to be with her. I went there as soon as the place opened because I didn't want to be there when the place was packed and she was too busy serving customers to spend time with me. I wanted to spend time with her. I wanted one-on-one, -on -one undivided attention. No, oh, yeah, no, that totally sounds like a normal thing. That sounds normal. He's sounding totally normal right now. No, there's nothing weird about the way he's coming off right now, right? No, totally not psychotically weird. I wanted to be with her. I loved her. I chose where I, I, I chose where to live so that I could be close to her. She was the woman that I wanted to spend the rest of my fucking life with. Everybody, everybody's convinced that I'm some fucking liar, manipulator, player, rapist, fucking all this horrible shit. But I'm not. I'm not those things. I love that woman. Okay, it gets weird. I looked up this guy on the internet while I was like in between editing and I found something here that you guys should look at now here it is I reached out for comment regarding this um, to get confirmation that if any of this is true whatever um, it's not something that a regular woman would just you know make up and I know yes false accusations exist I'm not saying that they don't but you know what I mean so pending you know truth reveal but yeah Look at that. Found that on Tumblr from a Google search, man. I gave her little gifts to show her that I cared about her. I spent time with her because I liked her and I cared about her. I helped her with her bar because I liked her and I cared about her and I liked spending time with her. I liked her so much that sitting around helping her glue art cards onto the wall with a glue stick and decorate the place. I enjoyed her company enough that it was, I enjoyed just hanging out with her and helping her glue art on the walls and helping her make decorate the place because I liked her. I really cared about her. I really loved her. I thought she was sexy. I had chemistry with her. We had something special. There was everybody there could feel it. Everybody in the room People, everybody in the room could tell that there was something between us. They could feel it. You couldn't be in the room with us and not feel it. I no, they probably thought you were a fucking creep and were terrified for really, her. Really, really cared about her. She was really important to me. I really loved her. I wanted to marry her. She was the woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And she had me arrested because I gave her a Christmas present and I lost my job. And then I gave her a Christmas present and then she called the cops and that was it. Look, to give you what kind of mindset this guy was in, he was looking for her online to look up for her. I guess she allegedly was, or maybe it was someone else, was in some kind of sex work or something or engaged in some kind of sex work. I think it was, this is the same lady. Because um, he mentions it had something to do with the bar. He was looking for her online. It's like, this dude is so... He's so mentally ill. And I think at this point, he's a danger to people. So really, I think at this point going forward, any videos I do on this guy, it's just more just... It's just expose stuff, you know? I did reach out to his ex-wife on Tumblr to see if... I, it's a long shot. It's a long shot. But we'll see. Um, to see if I can get any kind of information. 
if I do, I'm definitely going to make it public, 100%, uh, whatever they are okay with. Um, but yeah, I this is brutal. This guy lives like an hour away from me in Toronto. So it, I hate knowing that there are just people like this out there, you know, as a husband and a father. Um, it's insane. This guy is just insane. He's like a Canadian Cyrax. It's, it's bad. But uh, yeah, uh, more Ian Foot content as he puts it out. I will be covering him. Uh, unfortunately, I feel a horrible connection to this guy. I want to I wanna keep doing this. So, yeah, expect more. Uh, feel free to subscribe and like if you guys like the content. Uh, comment. Uh, whatever bit you do helps a lot for the channel. Um, yeah, let's try to hit a thousand subscribers soon. I don't know what I'm going to do, but yeah. Uh, have a great day, guys. Take care.